Oh, dearest Father, what a privilege it is to be your children. We walk in the power and we live a life of favor because of who you say we are. We thank you, Father, for making us off limits to the ravage of the enemy. Amen. Have you ever wondered why Christians ascribe so many of the things in their lives to the enemy? Have you noticed how easily people declare how strong the enemy is when bad things happen? Maybe we should stop and be reminded that there is a place where we are untouchable and only God can give permission for the storms to blow there. Psalm 91 verse 1 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Nature teaches us this concept of a place where neither the unapproved natural or supernatural can venture. There is a place in the world where no storms, no hurricanes can reach and have never reached because God so established it. It is that space five degrees north and five degrees south of the equator. In this place, what scientists call the Coriolis effect is absent. And this is the force that causes air to spin. Hurricanes naturally need this force to spin and keep pulling in warm, moist air. So in this place where the Coriolis effect is not present, hurricanes just cannot form. Hurricanes can't cross the equator because a steadily decreasing Coriolis effect will stop the storm from spinning. They just can't touch anything within five degrees north and south. Doesn't that sound like a place of still waters and quiet rest? It sure does. Psalm 23 verse 4 tells us, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Three Hebrew young men would soon understand what this verse really means as they face the wrath of a king in a strange land. They were Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, better known by their Babylonian names Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were the young men who prayed with Daniel so that God would reveal the meaning of King Nebuchadnezzar's dream and spare the lives of all the wise men. Daniel 2 verses 17 and 18 tell us, Then Daniel went to his house and made the decision known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, that they might seek mercies from the God of heaven concerning this secret so that Daniel and his companions might not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. All four young men went to a place of rest and power, a place of prayer, and God took over the reins. Not too long after this, the pompous, arrogant Nebuchadnezzar decided to build a golden statue, demanding that Everyone in Babylon should bow down and worship this image. The statue was imposing, 60 feet high by 60 feet wide and made from pure gold. And to top it off, the coronation ceremony was splendid. Thousands of people and a multitude of musicians. But these young men were not impressed. This was a crime scene, grand theft, people stealing God's worship, and they would not be party to it, so they refused to bow. Nebuchadnezzar was livid, and he had the gall to tell them that he would throw them in the furnace and no God could deliver them from his hands. Their answer was, we've already decided and we don't need to talk about this anymore. 
If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. In Daniel 3 verse 17. When the music started again, the three young men were the tallest in the crowd as they were the ones standing. Babylon changed their names but could not change their character. True to his words though, Nebuchadnezzar threw them into the furnace, a furnace so hot that it killed the soldiers who threw them in. But in the same way that storms cannot cross the equator, the hottest part of the earth, so it was that destruction and death could not cross into the furnace to come close to the young man. A place right there in Nebuchadnezzar's furnace where flames could not molest the children of God. How ironic, but very profound. The lesson is you can remain untouched right there in the middle of the storms. Nebuchadnezzar's fury and his flame, might I add, could not cross into their space. Why? Because Christ stood with them. And Jesus was there because of their faith and obedience. Isaiah 54 verse 17 tells us, No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me. Did you catch that? It is your heritage, your birthright, to condemn every tongue that rises against you and to destroy every weapon that is aimed at you. It is your heritage. The songwriter tells us there is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God, a place where sin cannot molest near to the heart of God. And I add that this is a place where sinners and flames and storms cannot molest, cannot disturb you. Near to the heart of God is a place where the desire for sin cannot reign. It's a place where faithlessness cannot exist and where doubt is alien. It is that place of quiet rest, rest in God. But you only get here if you do not feed the forces that create storms in your lives. Do not support the Coriolis forces because they breed storms. These young men did not hesitate with their decision. They did not doubt and they did not even look for a way out. It was simple, we are not bowing, period. As Paul says in Romans 13 verse 14, they put on the Lord Jesus Christ and made no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. God opens a gift for someone today. He says to you, you do not have to be distressed by the storms of life. It is your location that matters. So where do you stand? Just as hurricanes cannot form near the equator, the enemy's storms cannot touch you near the heart of God. Oh, they will pass over. I want you to look at yourself in the mirror and speak over your circumstances today. Say to your storms that of your own desire, you cannot touch this. Psalm 91 verse 7 reminds us, a thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. And we are praying, Jesus, Jesus, keep us near the cross, there a precious fountain, free to all a healing stream that flows from Calvary's mountain. Father God, help us not to encourage those things that feed the Coriolis forces in our lives, but to draw closer and closer to you, to that precious fountain and that place of quiet rest. And we say, Amen and Amen.